genuine concern about these high prices. There is a genuine concern about this current high price. You can see there's a lot of hedging taking place. There's a lot of hedging taking place. And that's what you've got to try and think about. You've got to try and think about this. If we look in the background, you can see there's a lot of hedging taking place here. And they unwind it just here. They unwind it the next morning. So when we start to look at these ideas, we can start to understand this a little bit better. If I look at this on a lower time frame chart, a five minute chart, does anybody see the hedging coming in? Well, there it is. There's the hedging coming in. See how at the top edge there seems to be an awful lot of hedging? There's the opportunity to get the hedge trade, isn't it? Right there. There's a lot of hedging coming in at that higher print. Into this top edge, does anybody see any hedging coming in? Yes, there it is there. So there's hedging starting to show up on this higher price, isn't there? If I take it down into a one minute chart or a, a 30 second chart of this morning, does anybody see any hedging? Well, not quite yet, but obviously it started to come out on the down candle here. And we can see that there is quite possibly a divergence as we reach into the second phase here. And there's a possible high coming in at the top edge because of the hedging that's coming in. This is my point, Miguel, isn't it? This is my point. Because I had people mentioning even that single point was that Cambria tail looks amazing. If only there was a way of being able to see it on a one minute chart or five minute chart. Do you see what I'm trying to teach here, Miguel? People just miss that subtle connection to move from kindergarten to PhD level. Does everybody get it? Does everybody understand what we're trying to show you guys in these processes? That relationship of looking at hedging, for example, why would that be a hedge? Why would that be something I should know how to put on my charts without re having to tell me? That's what a PhD does. They start developing out these ideas instead of relying on me telling you them. That's what PhD students do. That's how you get your doctorate. That's how you get your qualification. That's how you become a professional, is you don't wait for me to tell you. You know these answers. How do I get that Cambria tail indicator on my charts? How am I? Well, it's nearly all bonds. It's 90% bond market. So basically, the Cambria tail is just bonds. Well, if I understand the Cambria tail is a hedging trade process, people buying hedges to hedge downside exposures, if I do that relationship, perhaps, perhaps I might be able to see something very, very interesting. When I mean, you look at a daily chart and you start looking at your Cambria tail and you start asking whether there's any, if there's any kind of confluence between these ideas, of course, then of course it's up to you to start looking at that and saying, well, I know it's not perfect, but it actually is quite interesting, isn't it? It's not perfect, but it is very, very close. Very rare that we have an up day without a down day. So we can start looking inside these areas and we can start saying, well, based on these Cambrian tails, we can see a very, very similar pattern all the way through this process, can't we look? All the way through this process. Now the Cambrian tail is not options, eh, sorry, is not treasuries. It's also option market. So it's never going to be the same, but it's going to be similar. The thought process plus options is going to be similar. So in other words, when you look at, if you wanted to develop a, an actual real-time Cambrian tail, you could do it by doing bonds plus put option, vol, put option volume as a relationship to equities. So you could do some sort of a stochastic relationship between bonds and put option volumes and add that into your relationship with equities. And you'd probably be able to find out exactly what Cambria is doing at exactly every single point in time, right? But obviously the downside of the Cambria tail is that you don't see very much on a one minute chart. You see something because it is a traded product. So I can see the Cambria tail does show something on a one minute chart, but it's very, very little. So therefore, if I'm looking at the Cambria tail, it's not very useful. Whereas this is very useful because I can see divergences in terms of hedging. 
if I can see a hedging divergence, I can start thinking to myself, well, is there any options coming in? Reasonable, Mike? Reasonable, Adam? Are there any put options getting bought at these high prints? And obviously what I can then look for is a put option getting bought at high print. Well, we can see that the biggest single put option today was on that arrow right there, wasn't it? So not only do we have bond hedging coming in, we also get this enormous put option volume coming in at the same time. And all of a sudden, you start saying, damn it, that's exactly what Cambria Tail is doing. They're buying treasuries, which is the, re the green line dropping, and they're possibly buying an awful lot of puts. Hence the reason why the put option line explodes in volume terms. So all of a sudden, you've came up with the perfect tail narrative without having to spend a lot of time con contemplating what the hell this is all about. It's pretty obvious what it's all about. This is why I've brought the tail ETF description box across onto the screens on two consecutive days because I just don't think people would accept or, or kind of getting the significance of hedge flows. Hedge flows make up a huge percentage of volume in the markets, guys. Huge percentage of volume. All the gamma hedging, they make up a huge percentage in the bond market for all the, the, uh, the DVO1 hedging. They make up a huge percentage of volume in the Forex markets because of the, uh, the, uh, the end of month rebalancing books, for example, by the fund managers and the carry trades. And obviously that hedge flow is very visible by drawing this equity bond line onto your charts and then cross-referencing it with a very large, sizable surge in options. And when you've got a line that's declining and you've got a big option surge, then you say, wait a second, that's probably going to be a top, top edge short, and it was. And then when you see another big volume surge here and another declining line, you're saying, it's a pity it's into a low price, because if it was into a high price, that'd be a given that you'd sell it. But on this occasion, it's into a low price, so it's not as good. Uh, but nonetheless, it still went down for the next 60 seconds. And that's what we've got to try and do is think about these things. Think about these things, because when you start seeing that divergence coming in, for example, yesterday, and you start looking at that divergence into this price area here, and you start seeing that huge option flow coming in behind that divergence, you say, damn it, that's a good sell right there, it's surely. Well, that was the high of that last whole phase. That, that last whole phase on that last whole phase on what on on the equities. Look, never went any higher than that. Look, higher, higher, higher. Stayed below that line the rest of the night. The rest of the night, guys. Stunning, isn't it? Absolutely stunning when you think about it. And it's just about recognizing the simple stuff, the big picture divergence and the highs up here. Look at that top edge, guys. What do you recognize happened? Huge put volumes. Huge put volumes into the high price up there. Look, huge put volumes. Now, we never got the divergence at that stage, but it's not all about happening at exactly the same time. But then when we get these other big put volumes here and here, and then another big put volume here, and another big put volume here, and then another big put volume here, you're starting to see the divergence on the hedging on the bond market. And then you say, that looks like a good top edge. My God, it was a good top edge. What the hell? Pretty special stuff, isn't it? Pretty special stuff. We like this. It's very good. Crazy, 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 crazy.